My name is Steve. Welcome to my shop. Before I go into the description of this video, I just want to thank all my subscribers and particularly the new subscribers that have come in because as of the time that you view this video, I will have hit 3,500 subscribers and I think that that is just absolutely fantastic. Uh, if you like what you see, please hit that subscribe button and then also click on the bell icon so that you're notified of my videos as I post them. This video is one that I actually was not going to do, but I hinted at it and I got a couple of people that asked, well, couldn't I just show a couple of the machining operations? The nature of this project is a small production run. I think I've got about 20 pieces or so that I have to make of a couple of different styles. And it's a proprietary tool for another industry. And I decided that, yes, it did have some interesting setups and machining operations that I could show without really getting into the exact purpose for this tool. So this video I am going to be machining a radius slot into a piece of 7 16 303 stainless steel. I'm going to bring the camera around and show you up close what the slot looks like and then I'll take you over to the mill and show you how I did it. This is the piece that I am machining. And you can see there's a slot that goes from here to the end. I have already cut all these pieces to length and I I dressed off the ends and beveled them. I think they're eight inches long. And let's see if we can see. I'll try and come telephoto to show you the end. See, there's a little radius in there, and that's an eighth inch radius. So I have a quarter inch end mill that I'm going to use. Ideally, this would be a perfect job for my new horizontal mill. And I actually have the cutter for it, but I do not have it set up yet. So anyway, this piece is going to get the other end machined also, and I'll show that setup and the machining in a separate video. So I'm going to take you over to the mill, show you how I set this up, and show you how I machined it. And that, actually, that fits in this handle. And there's a, uh, there's a pin in the handle that it registers with. And that slides in and out. If it's not registered, it won't go in. And I'm making nine of these in this lot. I've got the mill all set up. I'm putting the piece in just flush to the end of the jaw. It's not a critical dimension, so I just do it by hand. I've got the vise marked down here, which is the end of the cut. Like I said, this is not a critical dimension. If it's within a sixteenth of an inch, eighth of an inch, that's just fine. So I've, I've got it marked. I've got my quarter inch ball end mill, which is an eighth inch radius, mounted. Uh, 
it's zeroed out. I'll, I'll test it to make sure that the zero is in the correct, correct position. And then my first cut will be 40 thousandths. Put some oil on it. I'm running the mill at 1300 RPM and I found that that's giving me a, a much better finish. Okay, I'm just touching. I'm going to go 40 thousandths. mark. I'll take the chips out, re-oil it, and the return trip is a spring pass. I can go a little faster, but it's still cutting. Forty thousandths. On this pass, I'm taking off a little more material, so I go a little slower on the feed. Take the chips out and do a spring pass on the return. Okay, this is the semi finished cut of ten thousandths. From my return cut and the finish, I'm just cranking it up an extra 2,000, and I found that that gives me a real nice finish on it. That's number five. Four more to go. Now I'm going to take it over to the Scotch Bright wheel and deburr it and polish it up. I'm deburring it with the Scotch Bright wheel. Putting a tiny radius on it. And I'll go around and polish the whole shaft. I'm only polishing the section where I machined it 
because the next operation I'll be putting it in the lathe and I'll polish off the other end then. Now I can go right up inside the groove. And that gets rid of the machine mark. So let's go try it in the handle, see if it fits. Okay, just wipe it off. There's the groove. You can see on the end there, it's the radius. And this is the handle that it fits in. It's got a collet. And every once in a while you get lucky, it was lined right up. There's a, uh, there's a pin in there that it lines up with. It fits perfect. So let's finish the other four. Here are all nine of them ready to go and ready to machine the other end. Now I also have, uh, I'm going to show you in the next shot. Here, there's another style handle that has a collet in it that takes these hex shafts. And I'm making some of them also. I'm making uh, four of them that are eight inches long and five of them that are five inches long. And all of these get the other end this, uh, with the same treatment. And it gets a proprietary taper turned on it. And then I have to drill and tap the ends to hold on another piece, uh, a head that actually goes on to it. I was just looking to see if I had a handle for this style, but I don't. Uh, not that it's that important. And so uh, the next video will cover turning the tapers, setting up the lathe to turn the tapers, and I'll be turning the tapers on all of these. Well, that's going to wrap up this video. I know it's a short one, but I decided to make two short ones rather than get too long because I know from my analytics that the long ones... They only watch a short portion of it anyway. So, thank you for viewing this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. I'll see you in the next video.